Hey everybody. Okay, moving on to Revelations chapter 6 here. And I saw when the Lamb, Jesus, opened one of the seals, and I heard as if it were a noise of thunder, one Jesus of the four beasts saying, Come and see. <laughs> uh, so you go. One of the four beasts is speaking to him directly. So now you know one of the four beasts is sort of a singular entity. That's what you're supposed to get from that. Because the other the other two be three beasts are like a multitude, a score of people, as we read earlier. Okay. And I saw him behold a white horse, and he Jesus sat on him with a bow, and a crown was given unto him. Yes, because he is the king of all the Jews and all of Israel. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Of course, that's Jesus. That's what he's going to do. And when Jesus, uh, he, Jesus, opened up the second seal, I heard the second beast. Uh, Jesus, as all the beasts now, speak with the one voice of God. Now, the second beast, they, they all, once you're in the body of Christ, okay, we all speak with one accord, one will, God's will. So when the second beast is speaking, it's also Jesus speaking, okay? I said, say, come and see. And there went out another horse. And um, and and there went another horse that was red, and power was given unto him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should they should kill, um, and that they should kill one another, and that there should and they were, and there was given unto him a great sword. So. This is Jesus has just, we've just seen the first beast, Jesus. The second beast is uh, the second horseman. And we're supposed to draw that correlation. The four beasts and the four horsemen are the same. Okay. And again, there are ways of how God is describing the aspects of his people and the distinct groups that they also belong to as well. So the first group that Jesus goes and gets is we know the dead in Christ that's how we kind of start deducing who these characters are and so the red horseman is the dead in Christ from Adam all the way up to everyone to the beginning of the tribulation September 23rd uh, the the next group is uh, the third and uh, sorry he goes and we opened, and when he opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, and again, it's the voice of Jesus still speaking, come and see, and I beheld a low black horse, uh, and lo, a black horse. These are those who died during the tribulation. These are the tribulation saints. And he sat on him and had a pair of balances in his hands. And I heard a voice, Jesus, in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see that thou not hurt the oil and the wine. Um, the oil and the wine is the new, it's the new wine, really. And it's, it, it's the living remnant. That's what this is all about. He's coming for his first fruits, you know, the first living fruits. And when he opened up the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I look, <clears throat> I looked, and behold, a pale horse. This is indicative of the remnant, okay? And his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed him. And power was given unto them, power is given unto them, over a fourth part of the earth. That's right. This is God's army to kill with sword and with hunger and with death 
yeah gods we know that the two uh the two witnesses had the power to put plagues and change the weather yes this is this is the two witnesses this is god's people right here this is what they come down and do and it should give you a good idea how big this uh event is by the way because it's a fourth of the earth that gets jacked up and that's about what the uh territory of mystery babylon is Damascus will be destroyed. We know that, right? When the tribulation starts, when they say peace and safety, Damascus is destroyed. And who says peace and safety? It's actually the Prince of Peace. And who's safety? Gods. They won't be the United Nations. They won't be from here. It's God announcing peace and security. Peace and safety it comes from the Father. That set everything off, and that's when Damascus gets destroyed. <clears throat> Pardon me. So, the reason I bring that up is Damascus isn't the United States of America. You should know that one of the greatest asset, Mr. Babylon points is the USA. And, uh, but it's not the only one you should know. The, that eagle on a flag just extends to so many nations. This is Rome's expanse across the world, okay? Uh, but really more Babylon. Um, anyways, carrying on. Um, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw uh, under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Uh, this is the third beast and the testimony the testimony which they held and they cried a loud voice saying how long O Lord holy and true dost thou not judge and avenge our blood and on them that dwell on the earth and the white robes were given unto every one of them and these are the people that are dying during the tribulation and it was said unto them they should rest yet a little season until their fellow ser servants and their brethren that they should be killed as it were should be fulfilled um <sighs> this fifth seal you know that's what i think uh, we're kind of approaching right now uh the camp the, the camps are up right the beheadings are all uh, that's what i'll be looking out for right now from here all the way till march that's what i think is going to be happening and i think that's one of the reasons for censorship is to kind of keep this on the kibosh because after world war ii no one knew during world war what you know the old uh german boy there uh hitler that was doing there it was until after the war where the machine started speaking. So anyways, uh, they're gonna try and keep that on the uh, the beheading thing of the people who were uh, refusing to take the jibby jab for as long as they can, <laughs> okay? Uh, is Because after this fifth seal, it's the sixth seal. So uh, it's the beginning right of the end here this is um the six seal is kind of neat it's uh well here we go let me just read and, be, and uh, i beheld he opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sathclaw and the moon became as blood it doesn't go black it became as blood right? and there's no mention of the stars going black on this one okay this i submit to you is the beginning of the 3.5 days of darkness okay and that i tell you happens march 6 2022 at 6 a.m jerusalem time is the beginning of it that's a uh, noon in jerusalem time um to know more about the sort of timing and how to get that just go to the channel and look at the other videos that are there i'm going to be working on part five after i finish this revelation series uh to uh you know sort of uh this is my uh new list these are the things that uh 
I'm going to kind of go over what uh, I've added to this list a little bit and modified it. But this is the preparation that you should have. Uh, and today I got fi finally my last piece, the palm. Uh, the palm leaf. I got it. I think it's a requirement. Uh, this is probably the one that's probably like, uh, mm, but uh, I'll explain that in the video uh, pertaining to uh, the beginning of the end series there, part five. So look for it. Um, I'm not used to doing this many videos. <laughs> that's one thing I didn't want to do is like clutter my thing, make it week after week content no if it was necessary to be said i put it up there i'm not trying to make there's no monetized videos here at all there's nothing of the sort i couldn't imagine doing that anyways um this is uh this marks the beginning of the end and it's 3.5 days of darkness that i've been screaming about it's not Something that happened on the cross or just after the cross. Anyone who does their little homework there. It's an end time event. Okay? And that's what Hosea. Actually, it's right right in that little bio here. Hosea 6-2. After two days he will revive us. And in the th in the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. It's, see, there you go. It's an end time event event. Suffice it to say, um, watch the part five that's coming up. Um, and the stars of heaven fell on the earth, even as a fig tree in her untimely figs when she is shaken a mighty wind. Oh yes, I guess the, the stars go do do go down on this one here. But it doesn't say they disappear. Um, suffice to say. I'm kind of iffy of whether the stars are going to be there or not, um, but who knows? Uh, something's going on with the stars for sure. Anyways, and the heaven departed as scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and the island were moved out of their places. Uh, and the kings of the earth, and the mighty men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty man and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks and the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us hide from hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb this is all the people down here the kings right uh for the great day has come uh and it's you know 3.5 and who will be able to stand uh all right so revelation 7 now <laughs> Okay. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. <laughs> okay. And holding the four winds of the earth. And the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, which the sea is the nations, right? Nor on any, uh, or any tree. Men are trees. We know this, right? This is the men. And so he's holding everyone back. Who is it holding him back? It's Jesus, obviously. Not Michael. There's no Michael or Strainer. Get the crap out of here. Uh, there's no Michael or Gabriel or Archangels. There's only one Archangel. It's Jesus, the Angel of the Lord. I've, you know, that's just mistranslating, creating fictional characters when it's really just Jesus that's appearing, not Michael or Gabriel. Anyways. Uh, that's not really for this, but you can look this up again. You now know in here you can go to Daniel. I'll be doing Daniel anyways and covering the Daniel deception in there as well. But uh, anyways. Uh, okay. Uh, and you should holding the four winds. Winds is also like uh, another... Uh, aspect of god's people because they move like the wind okay uh the four winds is the four beasts that's you're supposed to connect that there too right you know like oh yes that's all the four angels you should see them as groups representing all of god's people the body of christ moving as one and i saw another angel jesus ascending from the east having the seal of the living god 
Well, that's why it's Jesus, right? <laughs> it's got the seal of the living God. And he, Jesus, the Father, cried out loud to the four angels, which are the four beasts. That's Jesus, the Son, and his people. Uh, to him, it was to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, right? Because you know they got weather plagues and and uh, they're going to blast the sun, not the earth, and all that kind of stuff too, right? But the sea, we know, represents people. Right? You know, they're going to Jesus and the four beasts are going to jack up some people. Okay, sea is people and nations. <laughs> Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, uh, till we have sealed the servants. Right? So you're going to hurt them just after the remnant are sealed uh, on, uh, of our God in their, fore, in their foreheads. Uh, and I heard the number of them which were sealed. And, uh, and some people struggle with this, but this is the number, 144,000, get in, okay? Uh, and uh, of all the tribes uh, of Israel, it's not, uh, sorry, sealed 144,000, this, no, this is not a new rule. That's a mistake here. This is clearly only 144,000, not an innumerable amount, okay? Now, if you read Matthew 22, people get resurrected all the way up to the wedding and are not dressed appropriately and get tossed into hell. So there's more than 144,000 resurrected, but only 144,000 chosen, okay? The elect, okay? That is who figures out you gotta wear white linens, you're going to have your oil and oil lamp for three days. You know, all the those preparation things that I was talking about. This here, those 13 things, they got them addressed. Okay? They know everything. And they know when that's going to happen. That's 144,000. That's what I'm telling you they're doing. All right? You can figure out whether that's you or whether my story fits in with you. It might not. You know? Maybe your guy's not my guy. It's that simple. Maybe I got the... Maybe I got the wrong God, right? That's for you guys to discern. I'm putting it out here. I'm only here for a few people. I'm not here for <laughs> many. And I know most people aren't supposed to even understand this, you know. Tell them even though they will not listen. I get it. I already know my role. So, I'm going to carry on here. Of the tribe of Judah, and I'm, um, you know, trying to, for the sake of time, I'm not going to rip through all of this, but of all the tribes here, the thing to, to understand, they get 12,000 of everyone, except for the tribe of Dan. The tribe of Dan is not included because they had enormous difficulty with idolatry, okay? They worshipped idols, they had problems with it, okay? And ultimately were cut off for not adhering, all right? Um, anyways, um, Joseph takes over uh, the tribe there, just so you know. No, Dan? Well, we're going to insert Joseph. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all the nations, kindreds, and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms. That's why I'm getting, if they're wearing white robes here, well, palms, right? We've all had Palm Sunday, right? So it's the return of Christ. I think we should be getting palms, and that's why I got palms, all right? So there you know now. It's staring you at the face, the requirements of God's people. God's people will know. They will be ready. Um... And of course, this isn't the only mention of it, but you'll see in uh, part five why I cover why Palms is pretty windy out there. Ooh, I'm gonna have to change that in a second here. Um, here, let me just pause this for a second. I'm gonna fix something on my balcony. All right, I'm back. 
OK. So yes, uh, fixed the balcony. Everything's good. OK. Um, carrying on here. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, and uh, and all the angels stood about the throne, and about all the elders and the four beasts, and all fell before the throne. This is describing to you. This is the four beasts are the angels. Okay, <laughs> that's what's going on. Okay, um, and they're all worshiping God. Okay, who's sitting on the throne? The Father. So the Son, the Son, and God's people are all, and that's why the Son goes to pray. Remember, Jesus down there, he goes, "I'm going to go pray to the Father." Right? Like he's doing it now here, up in heaven as well. <laughs> okay. Um, saying, and that's again, you know, once again, just to re reiterate, these are the four beasts, and they're blessing. Right? These are good. This is God's people, God's army. This is a blessing. The beasts are not bad people. you got to get this out of your head. And they're saying, and they're in heaven too, right? And they're giving, they're thanksgiving. They're giving thanks. There's their blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving. What did they thank? What would a demon be thanking God for? Okay? The beasts are not demons, okay? And honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever, amen. And one of the four elders answers, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence they they came? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, he said unto me, These are they which come out of the out of great tribulation. Uh the third group, this is the third beast, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So they're they're out. They're saved from tribulation. They're not in the tribulation, okay? Um, therefore, they are before the throne, Jesus the Father, and serve him night and day in his temple. This, that's the job of those in who died during the tribulation. Now we know what their role is. The remnant have the role to rule the people of earth. The uh, people who died during the tribulation, the tribulation saints, they are night and day in the temple of God. That's their role. Um, and uh, they shall dwell, and they're going to be with Jesus. Uh, they shall hunger no more. They shall thirst no more. They shall neither shall the sun of the uh, the sun light on them, nor any heat. You're not going to. You're just immune to any of the problems that a regular human would have had. Again, that's an aspect that everybody has, right? We're all equals in the body of Christ. But just like in the body, you have a heart, you got a liver, you got hands, all essential parts, all different roles, yet operating as one. People don't understand Jesus is God. It's funny. I was thinking about how ridiculous that is. You know, like, what did they think? You know, God took away some free man, some man's free will and forced him to do all of God's will. Like, what was there? Some sort of, you know, I don't know what they're thinking. That's God. If he's acting like God, then he's God. If he's curing people from, if he can make something come to life, that's God. <laughs> yes. He is in control of life and death. Anyways, um, who can reanimate the death, the dead, if not God? All right. Checkmate. Revelation chapter 8. <laughs> and when Jesus opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about uh, the space of half an hour. And, you know, this is the quiet time. Um, this is finally after resurrection, because from the beginning of that light till now, this is the, 
the moment where God is gathering his people and now he's in the chamber with his people. This is the great wedding moment. This is the, the feast, the dinner. That's what's going on here. Um, and I saw the seven angels, that's Jesus, the son and God's people, which stood before God, Jesus the Father. And to them it were given seven trumpets. And another angel, Jesus, came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it up with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saint ascended up before God Jesus the Father out of the angels Jesus the Son hand and the angel Jesus took the censer and filled it up with fire of the altar <clears throat> Uh, and so you got to, he filled it up with fire of the altar. Let's go to Revelation 4 5, right? The seven lamps are the fire, which are God's people, his stars and angels. Like we, we've learned this already. So when he's filling the altar with fire and he's casting it to the earth, and there are voices and thunderings and lightning as and an earthquake, you know he just cast down people. Because he's peop those that fire that he's filling up is people, okay, and that's Jesus casting down his army, his host of armies. That's the hidden veiled language we, we're that's being unsealed here, unveiled. Hopefully to the bride. Uh, well, I don't have to hope that it'll happen to the bride, and it will not happen to anybody else. It will be blocked for everybody else. Um. And the seven angels, Jesus, the Son, and his people, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. This is the beginning of Great Tribulation, March 9th, um, 2022, at 6 p.m. So this is the three and a half days. This is the end of that third day. Um, that's like when Jesus is coming, period, right? This is right now the beginning of the great tribulation from here forward here right <coughs> pardon me the first angel jesus sounded and there followed hail mingled with fire with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of the trees was burnt up right so his people jesus was described as looked like he was on fire right burning brass legs right you see what he's what's being casted here the army is being cast down and this army is burning up a third part of trees well we know men are trees so men are being burnt that's these are the two witnesses remember the two witnesses they burn their enemies everything's going on here and all the green grass was burnt up the men and their children are burned alive brutal brutal and the second angel Jesus because they are in the body of Christ and they speak as all these angels are going to be speaking as if it's Jesus themselves that's so you gotta start seeing the picture now of God God's oneness as a body comes totality here so all these angels are when they speak they speak with one mind that's Jesus God uh, and so it sounded as if it were a great mountain burning with fire and it was cast into the sea, right? It's the sea of people, right? It's cast into the people. The fire, God's people, was cast into that sea. And so if you put fire into the sea, it should have turned it off, right? But no, it's not what's happening here. The sea became blood. It became death. Yeah, so we know that sea is people. When the sea is bloodied up, it's because now we know the nature of the sea. It's human, okay? So this fire fucks up that third. And uh, you should be putting that third and that third together. That's two-thirds. Just fucking up. Because uh, it's two-thirds of Israel that's destroyed. One-third is saved. Two-thirds is destroyed. 
And the third of the and the third part of the creatures was which is were in the sea and had life died. And a third part of the ships were destroyed. So again, we're getting our two thirds coming up here. And a third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as if it were a lamp, and it fell upon one third of the rivers. Right? So the rivers and waters, that's more water, more peoples. Okay? And the fire from heaven is God's people. Uh, that's why it's as if it were a lamp, because the wise virgins have lamps. That's God's people. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became bitter, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Uh, this men, right, uh, they're going to be destroyed. They're going to, their internal sensibilities are just going to be made like acidic, I guess. I don't know what that torment is, but it doesn't sound good. Um, and they're dying of it, okay? Do, 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 do. And the fourth, uh, the fourth angel sounded, and a third part of the sun was smitten, and a third part of the moon, and a third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. Uh, so God's just totally messing up with their. <laughs> circadian patterns I guess too right um, and uh, I beheld and heard uh, an angel flying through the midst of the heaven saying a loud voice whoa 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 one to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound <coughs> um all right, so we're at chapter nine. Uh, yeah, let's do another one here. Get up to the end of ten here. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw the star fall from Earth. And that's another thing too. There was no chapters and verse lines. That's been an addition. This flows right into this. And that's another thing you should be very considerate of when you're reading all scripture. Because the devil broke up ideas, so you couldn't connect what was ending here to that next other idea too, in chapters. So note how the devil has worked to try to hide things from you, okay? And God has allowed it, because we have to have the discernment to figure out. God, it's like, it doesn't matter, I already told you. Precept upon precept, line upon line, a little here, a little there, you build your whole picture together. So it doesn't matter that they break it up because your mindset should be right. He's already told you how to read this, right? So see it as one book, okay? An unending just speech, no chapters, no verses breaking up any ideas at all. Uh, anyways, uh, And on the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven, and unto him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Jesus, right? And Jesus is the Church of Philadelphia, right? Because he has the key of David, and he opens up that which no man can open up. Uh, open it, openeth. Uh, he opens the bottomless pit, and then arose out of that smoke. Uh, a great smoke, uh, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke, uh, smoke and locust upon the earth. This is God's army being released. Okay, and he's collecting the souls from below. Okay, this is they're pulled up. This is all being explained to them. So this is not the dead in Christ gets pulled up. They're like, hey, don't fuck anyone up. We're gonna grab. All the remnant and go up, okay? Um, they were commanded not to hurt any of the grass, neither anything green. All all of God's people, but only those unbelievers which have not the seal of God in their heads. Uh, so this is like a fascinating thing for me here. And for you guys to consider the implications of what, what this means. Because I... This sounds like, okay, the reason everything goes dark 
is because what happens is God, the light of the earth, goes down, right? And when he's going down, he's going to gather all these souls. And what's happening is all these souls are a cover, like a cloud around the light. And that's how they go up and it's unseen. But Jesus is going to gather the remnant. But here's the deal. He's telling them, don't hurt them. So there's like a time before he gathers all his people where these dead come out and they're kind of there. So I suspect that during the three days of darkness, you're going to have God's people and army all around these places. Hold still, stay in your place, don't go out if there's some craziness going on outside. <coughs> um, ignore all that's going on outside. So that's why, what I'd say about that, I think some of God's people come out during that darkness, and then, <coughs> and that's, you know, during the three days of darkness, he, you don't know when they're coming for you in during that. Yeah, so that's what you got to keep watch the entire time. So be wary that the dead in Christ come out. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure if, you know, what the timing is for those waiting here, the remnant in particular. Um, but be wary of it. Doesn't affect you. Stay still. Pray ceaselessly. You don't have to worry about what's going on outside anyways. Uh, and to all of God's people, it was given that they should not kill unbelievers, not to kill them. Uh, yeah, to not kill unbelievers. This is a really neat part. But that they should torment, that they should be tormented for five months. And that their torment was of a torment of a scorpion when God's people strike at the a man, the unbelievers. So God suspends death. He's like, ah. Nobody gets to die. I want you to beat these people to death for five months. Then you can kill them. This is not going to be light. This is going to be brutal. And in those days shall men, unbelievers, seek death and shall not find it. And shall desire to die and death shall flee, shall flee from them. Uh, the unbelievers and the shape of the locusts God's people were like onto horses so the locusts are like onto horse when have you seen a locust look like a horse we got to understand these are attributes the locusts God's army and what were they like they look like horses okay they're prepared onto battle and their heads were like crowns of gold so they got gold heads I'm telling you, they're horns. <laughs> they're golden horns is what God people uh, have when you do the homework here. The horns, right? There's a lot of that talk you should be aware of. Um, and they have faces. Uh, and their faces were as the uh, faces of men. Uh, and they, God's people, had hair as of women. It's like a lion's mane is what he is being described here. Okay, but they're telling you it's as well because they're like lions, all right? They're this like crazy, like hair, like women. And there, God's people teeth were as the teeth of lions because there's one of their aspects, right? They are going to tear people to bits with their teeth. Okay. Uh... If I'm not mistaken, the teeth are like made of iron as well. <laughs> Pretty, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, uh, and they, God's people, had breastplates, and on their breastplates of iron, uh, as if as it were breastplates of iron, and the sounds of God's people's wings, as it uh, was as the sound of chariots of many horses running into battle. Uh, so God's people have wings as well. And this is really neat. God's people had tails like onto scorpions that were stings, uh, and their tails and their power was to hurt unbelievers five months. 
So they got tails that sting people. Um, just for giggles. Do, do, do. Uh, I did a little doodle. Uh, where did I put it? Oh, yeah. There you go. There's my take on, uh, well, if it was made of stone, <laughs> a stone sort of statue of uh, what this new creation of God's people look like. So that's my take on it. Uh, God's people have four wings. I'm taking some artistic liberty on the size and the placement of the wings. I don't know where they go. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, what I think the new creation, the remnant, they have their... Uh, they're going to have a, an iron rod scepter there. But just my little visualization. There's that long hair that I was telling you about. Uh, we are reading about women's hair. Um, so anyways, voila. Had some fun doing that. Um, okay. So... Uh, da -da -da. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, pit whose name in Hebrew, in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue had his name Apollyon. So, um, <laughs> this is another piece of crap uh, translation, and it's so, it's so awful. Um, it's Revelation 9-11. And right below here is the actual uh, Greek version. Let's just read it. They have over them a king, the angel of the abyss. And it goes, the name of him in Hebrew is Abaddon. And in Greek, the name he has, Apollo. Like, the problem is, <laughs> again, like I told you, you got to dig inside to reveal this. I'll tell you what it is up front, what it's supposed to be. It goes, and they, God's people, had a king, Jesus. And the name of the bottomless pit in Hebrew is Abaddon. But in Greek, the bottomless pit is called Apollyon. Not the one who's reigning over <laughs> to the king. Like It's not the name of the angel. His, his name is not Abaddon and Apollyon. That's what's hilarious okay abaddon is a place okay of destruction that's why i put that here for you to see it's a place they're describing okay this is a place um so abaddon is right here the hebrew translation of what the abyss is the bottomless pit Okay, and the Greek translation for it is Apollyon, and Apollyon is only like one occurrence in this, okay? Um, but it's supposed to be the same word for Abaddon, and your Abaddon is giving you a clue that it's the play, a place of destruction. So you should know when you, start, when you dig around, you'll find out that this is really about the abyss. Okay, look, they destroy it from the abyss. It's about the abyss, not about a individual. Which, that's how horrible KJV is translated. Um, yeah, this is a, a poly on here. Um, and what you should notice, there's still, look, meaning, right over here, meaning the realm of of the dead it's the location look alongside the place of Sheol often appearing alongside the place of Sheol like it's a location folks but what's happening is the devil's been around it a long time right so when people are giving you this English down here what they've pulled out of all of the possibilities is the dogma that this person has that is writing this translation down right so echoes of the dogma and the false doctrine of what KJV has already created, right? 
it's not, you know, the bad guy who's called Abaddon or Apollo. <laughs> oh, I say that because I used to believe that shit too because of KJV. We all, you know, we all are suckers, but thank goodness the Holy Spirit helps us discern and get us past us all. So anyways, um, one woe is passed and there comes two woes uh, more hereafter. And the sixth angel, Jesus, sounded and heard a voice. Jesus the Father from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, Jesus the Son, which had the trumpet, Loosen the four angels which are bound in the river, Euphrates, great Euphrates. Uh, so you can see who's calling to be unbound. Jesus is being is told to loosen the four angels. That's the army. What's the army doing? The army is at Euphrates. Okay, this is kind of telling you a little bit of what's kind of happened. Because God takes his army down, and you'll see it a little further ahead where he puts his foot on one side of the river and one side on the land. That's the moment they're describing, and they're waiting there, and they're getting their orders, and that's when he tells John, don't write what's being spoken of just up ahead when we get there. That's what this is supposed to get you to think about in that moment. Um, uh, to Thessalonians, and now ye know what withhold is that he might, Jesus, be revealed in his time. God is holding back this whole thing, all right? God is, you know, about to let loose the four angels which are bound up, right? This is the army, right? So the four angels, Jesus and his people, were loosed, which were prepared, and this is really neat. It seems like the Great Tribulation is going to be a ruckus for uh, they were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And this is really neat, especially with the astronomy stuff and what the stars, the stars do. Uh, a year and a day, and you know, like there's a there's a constellation uh, alignment with the sun that happens. That's really, uh, uh, what do they call that? When two stars hit? Ah, I can't remember the term. But nonetheless, uh, there's an alignment there. Uh, conjunction. There you go. That's the word. Um, two, two align with that exact timing that's here. That's what's really neat is how the stars really line up with this timing. That's why it was so blessed, you know, all the stuff that I've shown prior to. Anyways, um, and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand. This is the innumerable number reference. Um, and I heard the, and I saw, the horses in a vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and jathan and brimstone on the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. So that fire and and hail and brimstone that and God throws down to destroy Mystery Babylon is His army. Okay, you're starting to hopefully see this picture now that we dug in this deeply and this with a microscope uh, to this whole thing. Okay, um, but these three, uh, the three beasts, God's people, uh, as the fourth beast stands watch, uh, was the third part of men, unbelievers, killed by fire and by smoke and by brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. Uh, for their, you know, God's people, power is in their mouths and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents, and they and had heads with them, and they do hurt. Um, so your tail has got like a mind of its own. It, it'll attack things. It's kind of neat if you know we're lucky enough to be counted God's people. Um, 
which I pray I do. Amen. I pray. Um, and the rest of the men, unbelievers, which were not killed by the plagues, yet repented not of the works of the hand, that they should not worship the devils and idols of gold, nor brass wood, da, 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 nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their separate, whatever, their fornication. They don't repent. <laughs> okay, that's what's going on here. That gets us to wrap up uh, chapter 9 there. All right, I'm going to take a break here and come back to this and do the uh, next uh, bit there. And I guess this is going to, part 4 is going to be uh, chapter 10. So, pretty sure that's a wrap. Well, this is like, yeah, this one's going to be part 4, right? going to be doing part five is going to have chapter 10 in it anyways uh may this serve somebody god bless